So are you ready for this one? I found out my brother was cheating with my fiance. That's right, going behind my back, betraying me. But it gets even deeper. Well, you know what I decide to do? I go to his girlfriend, but I don't expose the affair that he had with my wife. Oh no, I do something so much worse. I've been told numerous times that I acted like I love my family a little bit too much, and the truth is that it's not an act. My parents and my brother Marcus mean the world to me. We were surrounded by so much love, and this made my brother and I develop a very strong bond. We told each other everything with no judgment. This was probably the reason why I was a little hurt when my brother openly told me that I was not compatible with the woman I intended to marry. But little did I know that days after that, my whole life would come crashing down. I was not upset, really, because he told me uh, what he perceived to be true. I was upset because it was glaring to see right from that moment we met that my fiancé and I were more than compatible. Finally, I decided that it was time for me to introduce her to the family. I invited her over to my family's country house, where my parents lived, and I chose the weekend my brother and I had previously agreed to visit our parents so she could meet all the members of the family at once. We arrived, and I introduced her to my family, as my girlfriend and my parents were already charmed by her. They loved her so much that they asked her to come visit every chance that she got, but my brother was quiet all throughout lunch. My family became her family. Every other weekend, she was at our country house, especially when I was too busy to go with her. Most times when I was bombarded with much work and felt bad that I was not going to be able to drive her down, my brother would also volunteer to. It was nice to see that the woman I was going to make my wife someday fit perfectly well and bonded with every member of my family. I was so in love that I decided to take that relationship to the next level. After dating for a while, I took her to dinner and asked her to be my wife. She accepted. Then I arranged for an um, engagement party at the country house where I officially asked her to be my wife in front of the family and loved ones. Well, she accepted and everyone was so happy, but I noticed my brother was snickering. I asked him if he had anything to say that he wants to get off his chest, go ahead and say it. So my fiancé and I were not compatible, huh? I chuckled, thinking that he was trying to make an expensive joke. Well, but he was just uh, went ahead to repeat what he said earlier. I asked him to please give me a reason for his sudden remark, but he had nothing to say. I wondered for a second if he suddenly just realized this or if he had always had this thought but decided to say nothing. I took a moment to think about it and I realized that my parents had already given us their blessing. You know, to go ahead with the union. And I was the person getting married. I saw no problems with my intending wife, so why should I listen to somebody who had nothing concrete to say? Who was not even a participant in our relationship? It was a little disconcerting. Anyways, I turned to leave after asking my brother to enjoy the party, but he made a remark about my fiancé that I found to be insulting. I did not accommodate his nonsense. I immediately responded with a punch to the face and sent him straight to the ground. Attention was immediately drawn towards us. And even though I was angry, I was equally embarrassed at what happened, so I stormed out of the place. It seems my brother did the same thing. The party ended sooner, rather than expected, and my father gathered the entire family and even included my family the next day to find out the reason for the embarrassing drama that occurred. My brother and I just both sat quietly as my father demanded a reasonable explanation from us. My brother did not give a reply, and I guess it was because he knew that he was at fault. I did not give an explanation either, and it was solely because my fiancé was there. I did not want her to know that there was somebody in the family who did not approve of our relationship. I told my father that it was simply a little misunderstanding, but the issue had been dealt with and my father did not buy the little misunderstanding story. He was in the process of bashing us when he suffered a heart attack. He was rushed to the hospital and we were able to stabilize him. He was discharged within a week and his health greatly improved, so we decided to move on with the wedding planning. Wedding preparation started, and Ernest once again, and everything was going fine until I got the call that halted everything once more. I was finishing up my last task for the day at the office when I was notified that my father had passed. It was so sudden that I did not know what to do next. I felt my world crumbling, and it was very heartbreaking and somehow unfair. I didn't know what to make of the feeling I was having, so I immediately drove down to the country house to meet my family mourning. In the midst of our grief, we decided that the burial ceremony would span a full week. 
We abandoned the wedding preparations and started the burial preparations right then. My fiancé offered to be a part of the entire ordeal, and I was pretty grateful for it. We arrived on Sunday, and the funeral day is supposed to be tomorrow. My brother Marcus is around, and I had intended to use our father's funeral as an avenue to reconcile with him. Since tomorrow would be the day my father would be laid to rest, there was a couple of things I needed to put in place, so I left the house, and I was not supposed to be back until very late at night. Well, I realized that I needed an old photo album, and this meant I had to return to the house earlier than expected. I got to the house, but my fiancé was nowhere to be seen. I guessed that she was equally busy helping out somewhere with the funeral preparations, so I simply made my way to the storage room where old photo albums were kept. The storage room is at the far end of the house down the hallway, and as I approached, I noticed that the door was slightly ajar, and this seemed unusual because the room was rarely used. I could hear noises coming from the inside, right then and there. As I got closer, I could recognize one of the voices to be that of my fiancé. I mean, we've been together for a while, so I could tell. I immediately barged into the room and saw my fiancé and brother in a very compromising position. They were both startled and immediately separated from each other, but I had seen enough to know what was going on. My fiancé was speechless while my brother shamelessly muttered, It is not what it seems. What else could it be? My fiancé's blouse was unbuttoned and my brother's shirt was discarded somewhere on the floor, so it was exactly as it seemed. It was crystal clear that this was not the first time this happened. The very fact that they never bothered to even shut the door proves my point. I was literally very disgusted by my fiancé. I turned to my brother and I found myself struggling to suppress the need to beat him to a pulp. I stood there feeling like an idiot, wishing it was all a nightmare and that somehow I would be waking up soon. I shook my head sadly at them before I stormed out of the house. You know, I was starting to actually visibly start shaking. Uh, uh, I was uh, from that betrayal and the pain that I was feeling, but I did not create any kind of drama right then and there. I just walked out like I had seen a ghost and drove down to the motel where I'm currently staying. I tried to understand why my brother had decided to betray me in this manner, and I could not even understand why the woman I had shown nothing but love ever since she came into my life has also done this great deal of betrayal, straight evil to me. You know what, guys? I know that tomorrow uh, is the day of my father's burial, but I cannot uh, bring myself to attend because I'm sure I would cause chaos the minute I lay eyes on my brother. Ugh. So... I would just stall all by myself. My mother has called and left numerous messages regarding my whereabouts, and it's clear that she's not aware of what happened. She would obviously be mad at me uh, when by tomorrow I don't show up at my father's funeral, but, you know, the pain right now I'm going through makes it really difficult to honor my dad. I just, um, currently want nothing to do with my fiancé, and I mean nothing. Not even my brother. Their evil deed, ugh, it's left a bitter taste in my mouth, and the only way I can be in control of the situation is to stay far away from both of them, as far away as possible. At least until I can be able to suppress the feeling, if I had the means. I would carry out revenge against both of them in the most painful way I can think of. But, uh, right now, I just find myself very confused. This is the only reason why I'm turning to you guys for a little bit of advice. Do you think that I should still show up for my father's funeral and overlook, or would it be best if I just mourned him right here at the motel? Update number one. Hey guys, it's been two weeks since my father's funeral, and I still feel sad that I was not able to pay my last respects to him. After battling with myself, I decided to go see my mom. I was expecting an unhappy atmosphere, and that was exactly what I got. My mother attacked me head on. She told me I did wrong by not paying the last respects to him. She asked where I had gone that day, and I gave her the excuse that I had urgent work. She called my bluff and proceeded to let me know I had uh, kept everybody worried, especially my fiancé. I corrected her and told her the wedding's off, Ma. She refused to believe me and went ahead to caution me about losing a woman as beautiful and resourceful as my ex-fiancé. My mother shook her head bitterly and told me I was crazy for letting such a lovely girl go. Well, she asked if I knew how rare it was to find a girl like this. She even strongly suggested that whatever may have caused the breakup was my fault. 
I chuckled bitterly and decided not to tell her the real reason why I called off the wedding. I didn't want her blood pressure to go through the roof because she would suffer a heart attack from what my brother had done and also because my father's death was still fresh. She informed me that my brother traveled back to his house a day after the burial. I made no comments regarding that. Instead, I offered to spend some time with her, but she refused it. She asked me to go back so I could start an early search for another rare woman. I did not insist uh, because my mother was stubborn. I just returned to my apartment and I decided to use work as a means to escape the pain that I was going through. But the more I tried to get distracted by it, the more other parts of my life suffered. It was, you know, gradually making me numb to the pain until today when my fiancé shows up at my workplace. Seeing her just made the whole pain come alive once again. I would not even lie, a part of me wanted her, but I had to face the reality that things can never be the same between us. I asked her, what is that she wants from me? So she delivered me this long speech about how she had been trying to reach me and explain her side of the story, but she realized that I blocked her on all platforms. She said she contemplated going to my family's country house. I stopped her right then and there and forbid her from reaching out to my mom. I told her I was busy, I was a busy bee, and that she should finish up with whatever she wanted to say. She starts talking, but I just zoned it out. I feel like she used all this time to rehearse her lines in the mirror, and I was not ready to be lied to. When I noticed her lips weren't moving anymore, I calmly called security and asked him to escort her outside. I took it a step further by instructing them to never let her into the office building on my account again because we have no business together. She starts crying and held on to me, and they had to forcibly pry her away. She created a scene at my workplace, and it was so embarrassing, but I felt no sympathy for her. For all I knew, she brought this upon herself. I mean, how delusional she was to think that we could still work things out after she had slept with my very own brother. My mind is not really at peace. Sometimes it feels like my decision to call off the wedding was the best one, but perhaps the decision of never speaking to her again may have been too harsh, right? Maybe there's a possibility that I can forgive her, even if I somehow manage to forgive her. We can't be friends or acquaintances. Maybe I'm just taking the whole thing too far, and I'm not apologetic about it. I only hope that I've seen the last of her. What do you guys think? Is there a chance for me to forgive her and to move on peacefully? Update number two. It's been one year, and I'm still moody, yet a very successful man. I've been working nonstop, not giving room for love or betrayal to find me. I've been in contact with my mother. I visit her from time to time, but I always made sure Marcus was nowhere in sight when I would be there. He tried reaching out to me multiple times, but I was not ready. Then, on one of those days, I went to visit Ma, and she informed me that Marcus was getting married. She asked if I would be in attendance, but I respectfully declined. The day came, and truthfully, I was a little curious. My curiosity killed the cat. It led me to my brother's Facebook page. From his social media account, I was able to discover the lucky woman. My brother's new wife is Mia, somebody I had a bit of history with, see? I met Mia at a point in her life when she was tired of all the failed relationships, and she was only looking for a fling and no serious commitment. I reached out to Mia to let her know that I was her brother-in-law-to-be. This was in a bid to ease her mind in case we bumped into each other at the family country house. I did not want her to feel like I was out to expose her deepest, darkest secret. Sometime that year, my mother invited me home for Thanksgiving, so I decided to visit out of respect. Marcus was there with Mia, though I acted like I never even knew who she was. My mother did the introductions and my brother began to talk to me about his beautiful wedding ceremony like we were best friends. I smiled in his direction because I wanted to see, uh, you know, I wanted to seem polite in front of everybody, but I was burning with anger on the inside. Then the one who had stopped me from getting married was now telling me how awesome his wedding was. I excused myself after dinner and went home. Some days later, Mia texted me. We began to create a rapport. We were always texting, and whenever she was free, we had phone conversations. She was always saying that she wants to go out with me, but her husband was the barrier. I tried not to instigate anything, but I also did not discourage her from contacting me. Somewhere along the lines. She informs me that Marcus would be going away for business and would be there for three months. 
She suggested we met somewhere, and that was how we got ourselves entangled in an affair. We finally parted ways, but still communicated with each other. A little while later, Mia reached out to tell me that she was pregnant for me. Well, this was not part of the plan, so I asked her what the heck she wants to do. She told me that she was ready to divorce Marcus and become my wife. Getting married to her was a no for me, so I dissuaded her from it with some lame excuse of how my family would paint me as the bad sheep of the family for getting married to the woman who was previously married to my brother. She then noted that the only two options left were to either she, you know, terminates, or she pins the pregnancy on her husband. I immediately went for the second option because in my own view, my brother deserves everything bad to happen. Isn't it a bit funny that the universe has given me a clear way to repay my brother in the same coin that he used to ruin my life, even when I was not actively looking for a revenge plan? Am I wrong for utilizing this opportunity? Am I wrong for knowingly sleeping with my brother's wife, even after he basically did the same thing to me? Well, let me know if I'm the bad guy now. Update number three. This update is coming to you one year after the little drama with Mia. See, she pinned the pregnancy on my bro, and uh, to show how happy he was, he threw a little shindig at the country house. When my mother called to invite me, she pleaded a great deal because I had already declined Marcus's invitation earlier. I granted my mother's wishes and showed up at the party where Marcus and Mia announced that they were expecting a kid. Ha! <laughs> I joined everybody, and I mean everyone just to act like I was happy for them because I definitely was not going to be the party pooper. Well, months passed and Mia gave birth to not just a child, but a set of twins. It was definitely not what we expected, but it was good news nonetheless. Since it was unexpected, I snuck into the hospital and contacted a friend of mine. This friend helped me run a DNA test on the kids. This was uh, just to ascertain without any uh, shred of a doubt that I was really the father of Mia's kid. A month after Mia's delivery, I still had not set eyes on the infants. My mother called and asked why it was taking me so long to congratulate my brother and his wife on the delivery of their babies. I promised to call and congratulate them, but at the last moment, she decided that my presence in the house would be more appreciated. Once again, I gave in to my mom's wishes and visited Marcus at his house. After seeing Mia and the children and dropping off a little gift that I bought, I was ready to go home but Marcus insisted that he wants to have a brief conversation with me. He ushered me into his study and we started talking. He said he realized that he had not apologized for the evil that he committed with his ex-fiancee years ago and that he was using that opportunity to do so. I was about to respond, but he forged on and said things that just got my blood a-boiling. He proudly said that I should be grateful to him because the whole thing with my ex had stopped me from getting married to somebody who would have been unfaithful to me. The fact that what he said made no sense got me angrier, but I maintained my composure. If I never caught them back then, I would have married her, this unfaithful lady who he still would be having an affair with behind my back. Well, he did not let me make any comments as he continued. He told me how my ex fiance was really an irresponsible girl who used to be with lots of men in the past and that he was just one of those dudes. He asked if I could remember when he said that we were not compatible. I affirmed. Then he tells me that he was simply the reason for that, but he could not say anything in the moment in front of our parents. Does this excuse what he did? It was at that eye-opening moment that I decided I was going to make the most of the shenanigans between Mia and I. I excused myself and went home. When I got home, I thought long and hard about everything my brother had said to me earlier, and it was obvious that what he did was intentional. I mean... If he really had my best interest at heart, wouldn't it have stopped him from visiting me since we stayed in the same city? Where? What? What on earth stopped him? What stopped him from calling or texting about the situation at the time? Why did he not just let me decide if I would forge ahead with the wedding after finding out that my fiancé at the time was promiscuous? All my thoughts ended at the same point. My brother would be getting a fitting reply from me no matter how long it took. It's absolutely clear to see that my brother deserves whatever is coming his way in the near or distant future. My mind is already made up and there's nobody that can possibly stop me. Final Updates 
two eventful years have passed after my resolve to deal with my brother in the same way that he had dealt with me, and I've done a good job of it. I made sure not to have a private conversation with Mia, not even in the midst of the family. From a stranger's perspective, it may look like I felt indifferent about my brother's wife, and that was exactly the kind of energy I took to my family's country house. I was invited for the Thanksgiving again, and it was time to spend time with family, right? So I arrived, and most of my extended family was there. I was really interested in the mouth-watering dishes already set out. Mmm, I love turkey. In the midst of the conversation, I suddenly became the center of attention. All questions were directed to me, and they were mostly about why am I single? Still, if I had thought about being in a relationship and if I was ever going to get married, I took it lightly and just replied that I was not ready yet. Marcus spoke loudly and offered a suggestion. Apparently, Marcus suggested that I should get married early. He said it was actually the best way to go. He added that the most important thing about getting married early was childbearing that you could get that out of the way and do other things later on. See, he went ahead to say after fathering twins, he would not have any more kids. I was so infuriated that I got up in anger and I maliciously told my brother that he had not even started his journey of fatherhood. Yep, I'm going there. He looked amused like I was saying utter rubbish. Then in clear terms, I told him that the twins that he thought were his were actually fathered by none other than me. All chatter and clanking of the table immediately went quiet, dead silent. You could hear a pen drop. And then chaos broke through the deafening silence, Marcus. He tried to reach me from the side of the table while uncle and aunties were holding him back as much as they could. I was not exactly disturbed at all. I calmly sipped on my wine and waited for whatever he wanted to do. After struggling with what uh, many people, he gave up. Uh, he gave up the violence and proceeded dialogue. He first asked his wife if that was any truth, even a singular atom of truth somewhere in there of what I just said, and she affirmed. He went on to ask me how sure I was, and I told him, oh, I have medical proof. I told him about the DNA test and even suggested he carry out another just to be sure I was not a liar. I told him how long I've been sneaking around with his wife. I told him how quickly she suggested that she divorce him and become my wife immediately after she knew she was pregnant. Everybody present in the room was completely against me. They expressed their displeasure in what I just uh, said, but I paid them no mind. Because it's simple. They have no idea that what Marcus had done to me was the genesis of all this. My mother pleaded, begged. She asked me to say it wasn't so, say I was joking or pranking them, but once again, I told her everything. I said, it's the truth, Ma. And then I left. Three weeks after Thanksgiving, my brother visits my house. He wants to find out why I decided to ruin his marriage. I told him first think about the past, enjoy the repercussions of his actions, and then think some more. He doesn't think. I proceeded to shut the door in his face. I did not hear from him, nor Mia, for what, seven months? <laughs> Until my mother informs me that they were in the middle of a divorce. My mother tells me that she had tried to beg them to forget about the past, let bygones be bygones and move on. But what Marcus did was adamant about getting a divorce. My mother's request um, that we should all visit her that weekend, and we did. Although I was the last to arrive, immediately I sat down, and she launched this long spiel about family, brotherhood, love. She pointed out that her father would be displeased with us about what was happening in the family. She asked us to extend an olive branch, because none of us wanted to do it first. It was clear that Marcus was still hurting, and I just could not care about that, what he thought of me or anything. He indicated that the meeting was over, and on his end at least, so he left. Mia was looking dejected and broke, so I offered to rent an apartment for her for free. She was grateful and really happy, but I made it clear to her that I didn't plan to marry her. Hope this does not make me seem like the a-hole all of a sudden. Anyways, guys, take care. I'm out. Peace.